Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Let us pray. God, thank you for this moment. Thank you for allowing us to be at this appointed time. We ask now that you bless your word. Give your word success. I thank you for every person that you are allowing to be here at this time. Again, may no one come and leave the same way they came. And so bless us all and cause us each to be a blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. We want to continue with uh, the teaching on the role of the Word of God in reclaiming our families, our children, and our homes for Almighty God. I want to begin by sharing with you something that we do not hear much talk about, but it is so significant when it comes to the business of this whole spiritual movement that we are engaged in. And that is the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. The Holy Spirit shows up where the word of God is present. So if we ignore the Holy Spirit, if we turn our backs on the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is not activated in our lives, then the word of God, while it has all of the power, is not making the best, taking the best, or being activated in the best possible way in our lives. So you can understand now why we may preach, we may teach, we may study the word of God, and sometimes, Oftentimes, we do not see the manifestation, the output of God's presence. And that's because we have not made room for the activation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told his disciples, you go back and you look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He told him, do not leave Jerusalem until you have received the Holy Spirit. Do not. Because life itself can of itself be challenging. And if you enter that realm of the spirituality as Paul would say in the book of Ephesians the 6th chapter beginning at the 12th verse he said we're not wrestling with flesh and blood we're not out here eating popcorns and, 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 and spaghetti no we are in a fight and what is that fight? It is a spiritual fight wherein the devil does not want you to come into the fullness of God's blessings on your life. And so for that reason, he will do whatever it takes to keep you from becoming everything God intended for you to be. That's why Jesus said, 
If you are going to be successful, if you're going to be prosperous, if you're going to be healthy, holy, whatever you want to call it, you want to make sure the Holy Spirit is present in your life. And so I want you to hold on to that as we talk about the role of the word of God in your family, in your children's lives, in whatever is going on, even in your own life. I want you to understand that you cannot differentiate, disassociate, disconnect, divide the Holy Spirit from the word of God. The Holy Spirit follows the word of God. I want you to turn with me so you see what I'm talking about. I want you to turn with me to the book of John. John, the 14th chapter. And, and the reason I'm raising this because it is so real. You look at what's happening in many of our churches. You look at what's happening in many of our personal lives. We do not have the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of excitement. We do not have the kind of revelationary knowledge that God wants us to have. Because for the most part, we are not making space. We're not giving room for the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Jesus said in John the 14th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man, a woman love me, he will keep or she will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So wherever the word of God is, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit will all be there. Why? To make sure that the word of God never comes back void. To make sure that the word of God accomplishes what God intended. He says here, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Verse 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Spirit follows the word of God. When you love Jesus, you, you, you are saying to the Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place, in my life. When you keep God's word, you are saying to the Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Oh, yes. When you love the Lord and you keep his word, the Holy Spirit will be sent to you. We are not just studying God's word and reading God's word and, uh, for, you know, some play or some kind of uh, uh, pastime. No. No. When was the last time you saw someone constructing a house, building a house, and every day they would build a house, dig the foundation, and then the next day they come 
and break it down. You will never ever get to the roof to finish the house. That is how it is when we read the word of God, but do not put it into practice. We are like a builder building a house and tearing it down after we build it. Or we build a house it is so weak, almost like building those houses that people build on, on the seashore. You build a house and then the water comes and washes it away because you build it out of sand. I want to just encourage somebody today. I don't know what you're going through. I'm not sure what you are experiencing, but I want you to know if and when you want God to manifest himself in your world. The word of God is wonderful, but you need the Holy Spirit to activate the word in you, to turn it on in you, to bring about the results in you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. Let me give you another example. When you study a little bit of history, you will discover that most of the early, early cities were built along the rivers, they were built along the oceans. That's where they were built, along the water, because why? The earlier means of transportation was the water. So development followed or went where the water was. The same it is with the word of God. So if you want healing in your life, then what you do, you, you, you sit down, take the Bible, and you read everything it says about healing. Put it in your mind, put it in your heart, put it all around your house. There is a very, very famous minister whose name I wouldn't call, but his mother got sick and she was in the hospital for many, many months. And finally, they sent her home to die. They sent her home to die. She had lost a lot of weight, and they sent her home to die. And according to the minister, his mother went home, and what did she do? She took her Bible, went through her Bible, and found every scripture that talked about healing, wrote it on cards, and had it just about anywhere and everywhere. So throughout the day, she was manifesting that word, by his stripes I'm healed. He took away all my diseases. Anything that had to do with healing in that Bible, she had it reading it, reciting it, meditating upon it. When they told her she was going to die, she was about maybe in her early 20s and 30s, etc., in that neighborhood. When he was sharing the story with the congregation, she was in her 80s. God healed her. Why? Because she made up in her mind I'm not sure whether she realized that the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. God said, put me in remembrance of my word. I will hasten my word to perform it. Stop 
sitting around and worrying about this and worrying about that. God knows God has a plan for your life. And what you want to do is to get that book called the Bible and get in there and get the word for your situation and do what? Claim it, stand on it, and watch the Holy Spirit come in and bring into your mind the understanding of what you need to do in order to do what? Manifest that word. You see, one of the mistakes that we sometimes make also, we think that because we read the Bible, then something supernatural is going to happen. Where the supernatural thing that will happen is that God will show you what you need to do in that particular situation. God will show you how to think, how to react, how to say it in that particular moment. That's why the word of God says that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. This is pretty good. It's, it's good. I, I love it already. I, I love what I'm hearing the word of God saying and what the spirit of God has helped me to understand. Thank you, Jesus. That the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. When you love Jesus, when you keep his commandments, when you keep his word, to keep it means to cherish it. To keep it is to protect it. You should never ever at any time have the word, but doing something else. That's another mistake we make. You know what the word of God says. The word of God says, forgive your enemies. You know that's what the word of God says. But then you make up in your mind, I'm not going to forgive anybody, at least not today. I'm not. Well, if you say you're not going to forgive, then it means that the spirit of God cannot enter in your situation. God cannot enter your situation. Jesus cannot enter into your situation and begin to turn things around. You want to see things change around for you? You want to see some things change in your life, in your life? Especially when it comes to the assignment God has for your life. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about you. What is the assignment that God has for your life? Take the word of God. Meditate upon the word of God. And you will see the difference that's going to happen. Because what God is going to do, he's going to allow the Holy Spirit to follow the word. One day they will get there. I will show you when it came to creation. The spirit of God came first. And then when God spoke. The spirit chased after what God had to say. And when the spirit went and it was not there. It became what God said. Let me show you so you can understand what I'm talking about. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. If you're just joining us, we are saying that uh, our homes can be transformed. Our children's lives can be changed if, in fact, we begin to saturate their minds, saturate their whole thinking with the word of God and tell them and teach them, don't just look at the word of God and, and, and treat it like your socks where you change every day. No, it is to be kept. It is to be cherished. Listen to this scripture. In Genesis chapter one and verse one, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Listen to this now. And the earth was without form and void. 
and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Watch this. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Watch what's about to happen. What's about to happen. And God said, let there be light. Remember now, there was darkness, it was void without form. But because God spoke, the Holy Spirit had to go forth and make sure what God is requesting comes to pass. Why? Because the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. And so God said, let there be light. There was darkness, it was void, there was no form. But because God said it, it came out of the mouth of God, the Holy Spirit had to go forward and make it happen. It says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. Wow. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So when God said that, he said, oh, okay, let's continue on. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. Top, bottom. Let there be. But remember now, it was void, no form, and there was darkness. So when God spoke, the Holy Spirit said, we got to go. We got to go. We, we got to go. We got to go and make it happen. We've got to go and make it happen. I dare anybody on this call right now and begin to saturate your mind with the word of God. As the psalmist said, if you meditate upon that word day and night, as Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, as God himself said, put me in remembrance of my word. The Holy Spirit is going to come after. Wherever that word is, he's going to be there to make it happen. Don't study the word of God and put it over here and you over here trying to do. No. So if we want our families to experience the blessing, the move, the miracles of God, we must saturate our minds, our hearts, our environments with the word of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to show up and make that word come to pass. The Holy Spirit's work is to bring things to your remembrance. Yeah, the word of God is so important. I want to leave with you the following before we conclude is I want you to listen to me now. The, the word of God is the foundation for prosperous living, answer to your prayers, and understanding the ways and the will of God. Have you ever been to a construction site and see them building things? I remember once upon a time, we we're building a building. And after they, the people did the foundation and all of that, I saw them, they went into a corner of the foundation and started building something. And I was wondering what that was all about. And then later on, I discovered it was where the elevator would be installed. I said, whoa, really? The foundation is very important. And the word of God, I want you to listen to me, is the foundation for what? For prosperous living, for answered prayers. 
whatever the prayers may be. You've got to put the word of God in there and then the Holy Spirit is going to come and make that word and bring it into reality. So a part of your spiritual journey is to become acquainted with the Holy Spirit, is to become fascinated with the Holy Spirit, become a partner of the Holy Spirit. He wants to be your paraclete, walk alongside you, acknowledge him. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody is sitting beside you and you ignored them from the time you took your seat? until you got to your destination and you got up and you got out, never said a word to the person. You know, some of these big, big cities, that's how they operate. When you're from the South and you go to some of these big cities up North, speaking to people, they say, hey, don't do that around here. We don't do that. You know, you, you, you get on the train or you get on the bus, people sitting there, with a paper before them, don't bother me and I won't bother you. You come on by yourself and you leave by yourself. And because we do that to each other, we think we can do that also with the Holy Spirit. And then what we do, we ignore him. We do not even think about his existence. But the Holy Spirit is the foundation of what we need if the word must be manifested. So let's look at this word foundation and see what it means. From the aspect of building something, foundation is defined as the lowest load bearing part of a building. Interesting. The foundation is always below ground level. Can you imagine what is holding the building? It's not out to be ostentatious. It's not out to be bragging, look at me, pay attention to me. The foundation is underground. What really has you going cannot be seen. It's the word of God. It's the spirit of God. You've never ever gone to a house and asked the people, can you all show me the foundation? When there is a house warming and people come visit, especially if it's a new house, you show them the room, you show them the bathroom, you show them the kitchen, you show them this, you show them that, but you never, ever, ever remember saying, well, let's go dig up and see what the foundation looks like. No. The foundation is always underground. The foundation in our lives, foundation means the solid ground upon which our belief, our values, and our actions are built. Yes, the solid ground upon which our belief, our values, and our actions are built. When you consult the Bible to understand what foundation means, Foundation is basically the area on which idea, belief, opinion, principle, concept start from. The foundation is the word of God. Whatever it is in your life that you want to prosper in, that you want to understand, that you want God to hear your cry and answer your prayers. You need a foundation. And the foundation is the word of God. I know that some of you will say, well, doctor, I need to have a question answered. I've been with this thing a long, long time. And I have yet to see any kind of a positive response relative to the word. 
may I just tell you, your time is not the same as God's time. And God's time is not like yours. And that's why we have to come to the place to understand the will of God. Jesus talked about foundations. And I want to just read that before we go to God in prayers. I want you to turn with me if you have your Bibles to the book of Genesis, not Genesis, but Matthew. The first book in the New Testament, Matthew. I want you to look with me at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I want you to see this word with me. I said the word of God is the foundation. Whatever you want to happen in your life. <laughs> the kind of dress you wear to go to a wedding is not the same kind of dress you wear to go cook in the kitchen. The kind of suit you wear to go to uh, an important meeting is not the same clothes you wear to go cut grass. So when you want something to happen in your life, then you have to dress up with the word of God. You got to smell sweet with the word of God. You've got to be filled with the word of God. You've got to be saturated with the word of God. And when you do that, then the Holy Spirit shows up and says, okay, this how it's done. That's what you need to say. That's how you need to think. Yes, the word of God is the foundation. When you have the word of God in you, I'm telling you, you can withstand the storms of life. And as you know, they will come. When the word of God is in you, guess what? Not only will you understand how to manage and manipulate the, the storms of life that will come in your world, but guess what? You'll be able to ride through the storms. It will come. And when you have the word of God, guess what? What your enemies meant for evil Hallelujah. You see, when God is in the picture, I want you to hear me now. When God is in the picture, when your enemies think that they have locked you out and buried you, they only make it possible for you to grow. Take a seed and you can put that seed in the best of mansion in the best of place and that seed will never ever grow. But take that same seed and put it in the soil, put some water, let the sun shine, let it rain. And guess what? That seed is going to grow and it's going to manifest and bring forth fruit. Sometimes I want you to understand your enemies think they are burying you and what they're only doing is giving them an opportunity, giving you an opportunity to start growing. One thing I've come to learn, we do better under stress. If you're close to God, you do better in troubled times. When everything's going well with you, you're healthy, you're strong. God is not an urgency. But let things start to get funny. <laughs> Bill Collectors. Leaking roof. Car not working. The dog was doing fine yesterday, and all of a sudden today, the dog is not even barking. What happened? The bottom fell out. What do you do? Go check the foundation. Listen to this piece, and then we'll conclude. About Jesus talking about the foundation. In Matthew chapter 7. Beginning as verse 24, I want you to listen to this. Interesting. 
It says here, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man or wise woman who's built his or her house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon the rock and everyone who hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man or a foolish woman who built his house, her house upon the sand and the rain, the rain, the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. My sisters and my brothers, check the foundation of your life. And the foundation is the word of God. Hide it in your heart. Meditate upon it. Let it be a lamp to your feet and light to your path. Wrap yourself in the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit follows the word of God. To bring to your remembrance what you need to do under certain circumstances. And watch God carry you through your valley, your shadow of death. Watch God causing all of the weapons formed against you not to ever prosper. Watch God taking you through the fire. Watch God taking you through the flood and bring you to the other side. And causing you to stand tall above and not beneath the head and not the tail. Yes. If you depend upon God, and if you take God's word seriously, the Holy Spirit will show up and show out and make a difference in your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.